Oh, it's live. I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. Macklemacab! We are uh, live on the YouTube. Almost human live! Yay! And we're going to have a special guest soon, Roy Caffey from uh, Cold Sweat. The fifth. And uh, we'll be chatting with him. So how are you guys doing this week? I'm Good, doing one wonderful. Everything's you know, just wonderful. I got to tell you, uh, uh, last week's episode was very popular. Yes, it was. But I keep getting these stupid comments from people going, hey, are you going to talk about Kiss sell, yeah. selling for 300 million? I was like, man, look at last week's. You know? Yeah. Uh, we talked about that already. Live, we talked about it, man. I mean... It was like the day it happened or the day before. I don't know. All yeah, I know it was is, the day of. Yeah. All I know is I got to tell you all, man. Why is it such news? I don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. It's it, Who cares? But it's I will kiss. tell you, next Kiss Wednesday, I did do an almost news, almost what is it? Uh, only news that matters segment on Gene Simmons talking about how he sold it. For three hundred million, but he didn't do it for the money. Oh, okay. Sure. That'll be next Wednesday. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> and and, <clears throat> and uh, tomorrow, or maybe the day after tomorrow, I'm not sure. I'll have an only news that matters about Eddie Van Halen played drums on Van Halen Three. Did you know this? No, I didn't. No. I didn't know this either. My, my all drums. drums. He didn't specify. Mike Post talked about it. He didn't specify he played on the whole album, but it made it sound like he did because Alex was in bad shape, going through divorce, had major addiction problems. And Mike Post talked to him like, hey, your brother's going to do the drums. Huh. And Eddie played the drums on Van Halen 3, but it didn't say you know, if he played on the whole album. But that's really wild because, number one, I didn't even know Eddie played drums. Well, Eddie started as a drummer. He was a drummer when he well, started, yeah. I know that, but I didn't think he was good enough to play like Alex because, oh. you know, I don't like Van Halen 3, but while I listened to Van Halen 3, not once did I think, hey, that ain't Alex. You right. Know? I mean, I can tell when I listen to Dynasty, that ain't Peter Chris. Yeah. Alex has a certain style about him, you know? I can tell when I listen to Severed Angel, that ain't Wayne. Well, <laughs> That's a drum machine. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's, that's strange. I always thought it was strange, anyhow, that Mike Post was the guy that produced. I mean, Mike Post, I mean, he he's the king of TV theme songs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was buddies with Eddie, and Eddie hired him. I mean, I mean, he knew what he was doing. I mean, he's... Actually, he if I think was, about it, the, the drums on that album were very more like laid back, kind of, not so like over the top as like Alex would usually play. So I really should go back and listen to that because yeah, because I I mean all I can remember is the drums to without you. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, sounds like Alex. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I still have never listened to that album all the way through. I, I have because I had to do a track by track. It's painfully bad. I used to like some of it. I I, I didn't mind a lot of it. I actually like. I just remember the single. Too. You know, it had the single. Yeah. We what was it? We could work it out or something. And no, you just oh, said it without yeah. you. And um. I saw him on that tour, and the show was great because they played a bunch of cool old, you know, Roth stuff live that they wouldn't, that Hagar wouldn't do. So, yeah, I mean, Gary had that uh, voice that was kind of like in between both of them, you know. So well, I think yeah. he was a pretty good pick. Ron sounded a lot like Sammy on that album. Yeah, you know, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I saw some stuff that he did live too, and he said he had a little bit of a Roth style with him and Sammy, so it kind of worked out. So I think he was a good pick. I just wish the songs were better, you know. Shame they were terrible, and uh, that's what killed like Van Halen doing press after Van oh. Halen three. They they wouldn't do press anymore. They became like ACDC because hmm. ACDC is so fucking popular and rich. They're like we don't need to do interviews. Anymore. There's no need. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Severed Angels just it's they're about there. No more press or anything. Just, really, you're getting just throw it at albums and you're getting people... sick of the controversy. And yeah, the yeah. Paparazzi and shit. Yeah, it's just too much, man. Too much. Can't I heard. I, I heard Lou Mavs peed on a paparazzi. He did. He peed yeah, on I, me too, but I had my mouth open. So I saw. <clears throat> I saw that on TMZ. They edited your part out because you know 
Yeah, you know. That, that was saying. disgusting. Yeah. You, you drink and urine. Yeah. It's it's not bad. You ever do that? Uh, if I ever drank my urine? Yeah. Or anybody's. Oh, I, I drank a pregnant woman's, uh, a homeless pregnant woman's urine once. Oh. And it wasn't that good. I think it would have been better if I if I put ice in it. It was too warm. Yeah, you need the rice. You need... <laughs> <laughs> Homeless pregnant woman piss on the rocks. On the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Almost Human Life. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I'm still having problems sleeping where that other head is. On the really the conjoining twins. I'm still thinking about that. Huh? Still, he's still he's still having nightmares about it. Yeah. Uh, and well, wait, well, rip OJ Simpson. Oh, oh yes, OJ yeah. is dead. OJ is dead. I believe he was innocent. I don't. Honestly? Yeah, I, I... think it was Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw your post today. You think it was Bob Hope? Bob Hope is the murderer. Framed OJ. You know what OJ stands for? He's innocent. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. OJ, he's innocent. <laughs> H.I. OJ, same uh, thing. I got I got a cool record in the mail yesterday, the new Ravage album, cool. Spider in the World. Well, I don't know who that is, but that album cover looks pretty badass. I, you don't know who these, who Ravage is? You no. love Ravage. It looks it looks uh, autographed. It is autographed. The whole band autographed for me. <laughs> so are they um are they thrash or are they more like they're, traditional? They're metal? like a thrash slash new wave of traditional metal type band. Okay. I think you both would like them. I, I, they're really good. Yeah. I, um, one I of their early albums before. was on Metal Blade. They were on Metal Blade for a little while, but then you know they got off that label and uh, they're kind of on so, their own. So. so it's not. They're a newer band, though, correct? No, they've been around for over twenty years. Wow. Well, they used they used to be a band called Ravage that I want to say was on Metal Blade, but like way back, like in the eighties. Oh, I could yeah, be. That's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a totally different band. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of bands coming out nowadays that repeat the same name of a band that was around that didn't, yeah. that wasn't huge or something, you know? Yeah. yeah you know, we just, had, it, a, we just had a band come through here recently, some young guys are called Tyrant. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, there's yeah. a German Tyrant, and then there's a you know, Tyrant from Los Angeles, you know, back in the day, Legions of the Dead. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I guess these kids don't use, um, you know, metal. Nobody they don't looks. Look on the metal archives and see, you know, there's names already been taken. Nobody looks, but uh, yeah, that that Savage, that Ravage job was very very good. Everybody needs to check that out. I, yeah, I, I want to check that out. It looks good. I played a show with them way back in the day. It was uh, my old band. It was Ravage, and it was actually uh, the band Cage with Sean Peck. Uh, you know, from oh yeah, Cage those guys, and uh, it yeah. was a really fun, oh, and yeah. also um, uh, Zach Stevens was there with his other band, Machine Circle to Circle. No, Machines of Grace. Oh. Oh, cool, yeah. Cool. yeah, it was a really, really cool show. I was like, I was like living in a, a dream because like every band that I listened to was like at this show that I played at. I was like, that's that was awesome. You know, it was cool. That Fun was uh, Machines. Machines was the band that, that, that was Jeff Plate playing drums on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to be called. Um, they were remember? like Wicked Witch or Wicked something. Wicked Witch, like yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. No, there was a horrible <laughs> band down here called Wicked Witch with a Y W Y. You ever had heard? A fem- of had a female singer. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen them. They were not Ooh. good. Ooh, yeah, they were local. They were local down here. They played some metal fest up in Carolina one time. It was like one that had a bunch of nationals and stuff on it, but they 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 played on the bill. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, I've heard of them. Not the same. Band. Yeah. What yeah. else is going on? How's everybody in the chat here? Everybody saying hi. Hey, Catman, what's up? Cat King Man. Dinosaur is here. Catman, yeah. King Dinosaur, I love that dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That's everybody's in the chat right now. I know there's other people watching though. Mark Daly. Well, as soon as you start talking about Kiss, people will start coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, Kiss. Well, t- talking about Kiss, uh, Matt Salve, you have been doing a uh, uh, from worst to best. Yeah, I, I listened to one of your episodes. So. Yeah, and what do you think? We we're totally wrong. You guys, this, this is according to Greg. It's not according to me. It's just, uh, this I, I think you, all three of you were assholes. Good. Good. <laughs> so what are you doing? Worst from worst to best. How can you say charisma is a bad song? Shut the fuck up. Oh, come on. That song is so gay. Let's no, it's not. Well, it what's the, what's the what hell? What what are charisma. You, what are you, a homophobe? <laughs> Did I say it was no, bad? I, was, like was, I hope Bang Bang You was at the very bottom. That was the best song. It was number one. Number one. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> right after uh let's put the x in six yeah and Number make two. you make me rock hard yeah <laughs> revenge is fucking horrible it is not yes it is it's greg, garbage greg um greg put that pretty high but people are loving the kiss episode so uh, we've been getting a lot of praise for the stuff that we've been doing with the kiss stuff so because usually I'm a, i was afraid to do anything with kiss because oh, yeah. you know how people are uh, yeah no you know how my my fan base is so everybody, exactly everybody well, next you should do maiden Rat salad review. We did them already. Yeah, they did made it already. Yeah. Uh, next rat salad review. I mean, check out rat salad. You're not done yet, though. You still got more episodes, right? We just finished the last one last night, but it won't be up till like another two or three weeks from now. Okay, all right. Yeah, so check it out on rat salad. They got the kiss. So, oh my god, kiss. Oh my god. And they like and they like all the garbage kiss. So that's even yeah. more reason you all should watch because everybody out there likes all the garbage kiss. It, funny enough, the the highest episode so far has been the episode with the image of the kiss uh, image of a revenge, with you know from that era. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, because people like that crappy album. I thought like you it. like revenge. No, I like it. I like. No, I, I know he did. I like unholy. I love that song. Yeah. The rest got a message from Roy. He's got a little delay. He's got Zoom hardware update. Oh. Yeah, I know all about that. I've dealt with that before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, what else is going on? Uh, let's see here. Me, middle Mike. What's a better song called Ethel or Nurse Rosetta? You're uh, you're an episode cold, late. Cold, cold <laughs> Ethel, but but Nurse Rosetta is awesome. They're both really good. I think I like Cold yeah. Ethel. I like both. I like Cold Ethel more though. Yeah, Cold Ethel would take it for sure. Catman <laughs> says uh, on the Revenge tour, Paul came out and his guitar wasn't working. That probably happened a lot. He had a well, cool guess, guitar on that tour too. At the end of the road, a lot of the times the backing t- tapes weren't working either. He, um, th- I think he brought the on the revenge. I think he brought that's when he brought the Iceman back out because he hadn't mm-hmm. used it for quite a while, and then they started using it again on the revenge tour. Yeah, it's a really cool looking guitar. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of my favorites for sure. And um, but yeah, I mean, it's Kiss. That's it. It's Kiss. Roy's here. <clears throat> He's made it in. Let me add him. Let's get the show going. They went and believe. Keep, up, keep up with the people in the chat there. Yes. Anybody, have you got uh, some questions for Roy in the chat from Cold Steel? What was the other Cold, band Cold um, for the fifth? Oh, Cold Sweat. Sorry, Cold Sweat. Yeah, Steel. Cold Long Steel. band. Cold. Yeah, you don't know who Cold Steel is? Cold Sweat. And uh, the fifth. Nope. Really? Cold. You need to check them out too. Jeez. Cold. C O L E. Cold. C-O-L-E. Hey, man. Can you get your. There he is. What's happening? Zoom, Zoom updates. You got to love them. I hate them. Man, it's been a while since I've been on here. I went to update and the shit was like, <laughs> your shit's old. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, Mine likes up, to do it. What's I, up, gentlemen? Good to see everybody. Yeah, yeah man. How you been? Good at you. <clears throat> How's it going? So, good, good. So you got this uh got this new cold sweat CD just came out, Unburied Alive. Can you tell us how you dug that up? Well, uh it, it was kind of crazy after the 2020 reunion that we did on the Monsters of Rock Cruise. Uh you know, we all kind of felt the magic and the fans were fantastic and and there was really a a, a hunger to do it. Uh we got back together and did the monsters on the mountain thing. And, and the funny thing about cold sweat, every time we get back together, you know, everybody feels how good it is. And, you know, the fans want it and we want to do it and everything. But then when everybody go, goes away, everybody has other projects going on, you know, Mark's doing his thing, you know, so, so it, it's all, it's all romantic when we're together, but when we get apart, it's hard to really, really you know keep everybody on the same page so what really made this happen was uh the label that i've been working with rfk media which is ron keel's uh uh, label uh the fifth has been working with those guys and aaron fisher uh kind of spearheaded this whole project and uh you know these these were the initial demos that we did after we lost the deal with mca um 
there were, you know, these were combined with a lot of other uh, demos combined when it was, you know, sweating bullets after Mark left. You know, there was just a lot of stuff, you know, uh, out there on the Internet. Uh, so it kind of got conglomerated all around. So one of the main sticking points for one of the reasons that it took a while to get this stuff put out is we had to clearly, you know, uh, separate, hey, let's let's use the ones that, that we did after the cold sweat deal closed. And we went in with Mark and we wrote these tunes and um, combine it with, with the live show that we did on the uh, Monsters of Rock Cruise. So, uh, you know, it just all kind of came together uh, after 30 some years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. and they sound great. They, they were recorded at the famous Sound City recording studio. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. I know in yeah. the uh, in the documentary about Sound City, there's a whole you know picture collage. If you guys have seen it, yes, and it's showing all the bands that, that recorded there, and the, the guy Cold Sweat flashes up there pretty fast. It, you know, it, it does, and and it was a uh, it was an amazing experience. You know, at the time I was like. 23 years old so mm. i didn't understand the depth of that studio i just remember walking down the hallways and seeing the fleetwood mac records and the tom petty records the golden platinum you know i knew i was somewhere big time but at that time i was 23 and it was just like god damn you know shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh when when the when the whole MCA thing happened, we wanted to capture the same magic, so we went right back to to uh, Sound City. It was also the cheapest place. <laughs> that was why we wow. recorded there before. Yeah, at that time, Sound City was like on the downward thing. Everybody else was going digital, and and Sound City was old school analog with that Neve console. Oh. Yeah, because so, uh, Nirvana had dug it up, and that was kind of getting the buzz back on it a little bit. Correct, that was probably correct. still. You know, still hadn't started happening again yet. So, uh, you know, uh, we we went back into Sound uh, Sound City. We used Bruce Barris, who was the uh, first engineer on the on the original Cold Sweat record. Uh, God rest his soul. This record is also kind of uh, dedicated to his memory and Ronnie's uh, Ronnie's memory. So, uh, you know, it, it really was a snapshot of exactly where Cold Sweat was. And where we wanted to go uh, before the, the rug got pulled from underneath us. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wanted to go a little bit more in the Tesla vein. You know what I mean? We wanted to go more towards that that Euro blues rock, white snake, American white snake type yeah. thing. Yeah. And, um, you know... Um, I think they stand the test of time. It, it's crazy after all these years to hear them. They had some good songs for sure on there. Um, you you mentioned Ronnie, of course. So Wendy Dio was your manager, and you guys got to tour with Ronnie back in the nineties. <clears throat> Excuse me, pollen is still killing me, man. You've got it down <laughs> in Fayetteville too, I know. So. <laughs> Absolutely, but it's mixed with gunpowder, so it levels off. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, so you got the tour with Ronnie and all, but uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, working with Ronnie and stuff, man. I mean, I know he did the original, he he recorded the original Cold Sweat demos when they were called, when it was called Ferrari. When it was still, when it was still Ferrari, cor correct. Uh, well, man, you know, I mean, you got it. You got to remember, um, I was a fan. I mean, I had all of his cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Timestamp. Yeah, we know how old you are <laughs> you now. Know? <laughs> uh, you know, I had all of his cassettes. I went, I went to go see his concerts in either Greensboro or Charlotte. And, you know, he was on the Mount Rushmore of, of vocalists, you know. So, you know, when I got the chance to, to, to crazily enough be managed by Wendy Dio and to get that close to, to Ronnie, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, you know, from, from rehearsing with him in the same rehearsal studio uh, to get ready for the tour uh, to, to go into casual meet and greets afterwards to, to have some pints, uh, to go into his house for Halloween parties. You know, I mean, it's like that Dio documentary that's out there, all that stuff around that pool table in that bar, dude, I was there and it brought back so many memories and, and, um, I got to drink all that in and, and being a fan and, and 
I'll never forget when we played that first big debut show in L.A. at the Roxy. Every singer in L.A. that auditioned for the gig was out there in the audience. And I knew that Ronnie was going to come and Wendy was going to be there. And this was it, man. It was like shit or get off the pot. You're either the fucking man or you're just going to fucking shit. And to play the gig and to have Ronnie come up afterwards and, and go, you have, you have quite a voice on you, young man. And to have him say that to <laughs> a kid from North Carolina, you know, you can imagine. So getting to tour with him for all those months, uh, standing on the side of the stage, just drinking it all in his voice. He never had a bad night. Um, you know, he was just always uh, on and just fabulous with the fans. And um, you just kind of learn from that kind of stuff. You kind of drink in that 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 knowledge and wisdom. And uh, I was very fortunate to to be able to have a a, a short, you know, little glimpse, a little brief period of my life that I got to to really be tight and rub elbows and ride planes and tour buses and shit with them. You know, Yeah. is there anything that you remember him telling you about, about the music business or like things to watch out for or to do? Uh, or... Yes. Yes. He, 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 uh, he, uh, he... <laughs> <laughs> he's calling right now. It's <laughs> actually my girlfriend calling. I'm going to, and, and fat bottom honey, you knew I had an coming. interview tonight, honey. You know, I had to interview tonight. and fat bottom girls is your girlfriend's ring ringtone. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but busted. busted. Uh, you know, Ronnie. Um, Ronnie was big about the fans, and he was he he was just like uh, he was like Roy. You know, never forget the fans uh, because without them, you know, we're nothing. Yeah, and 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 Ronnie really did. He he. He talked the talk and he walked the walk. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. Ronnie, and, and you've probably seen it in the documentary, and if anybody has, has met him more than once, Ronnie's got an incredible memory. And if he met you, and if he had some sort of conversation with you, he saw you on the next fucking tour a year or two later, Ronnie would be like, well, how's your father doing? I believe I believe yeah. he was sick last time. You know, I mean, Ronnie had a, a real uh, a person to person connection with with a lot of his fans. Oh, mm. really cool. Sure. About that. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. Yeah, but yeah. learning that, uh, but, you know, never forget the fans, and uh, you know, he was just real. You know, mm. uh, and, and 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 one thing that. Nothing that he told me in particular that guided my career, but I I really have tried to walk like Ronnie, and I've tried to keep my integrity, you know. Because look, there's been plenty of times that I could have quit, fucking sold out and done country. I mm. I could have done a, a myriad, you know, gone on American Idol, you know, d done the Voice, done this, done that. And dude, I I just I didn't do it. I wanted to stay close to home, watch my kids grow up. And I grinded it out. And Dio will tell you, he's he's seen me out there it just grinding for years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and and it's it's not about fame or fortune for me. It's 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 the love of the craft and and uh, and the love of performing. So yeah, Fantastic. I remember I remember back when uh, in the early '90s or whatever when uh, or the mid oh, I guess it was the mid to late '90s now I guess it was when. Uh, I didn't even know you were back in Fayetteville and someone told me, I think uh, our, our friend Jason Lilly ran into you at a club where they played. He goes, man, Roy from Cold Sweats back in, in Fayetteville or whatever. And then that's when I started seeing you started, you had the fifth going and right. we started having, we started doing shows together and stuff like that, you know, and yeah, yeah Roy, yeah. Roy's definitely, he, he's a trooper. He's out there doing, he's been doing it for years and, and uh, carrying on. I mean, you know the the band would 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 like kind of kind of break up and you would reform a, a better lineup the next time and it just got better and better you know and you, I got I'm like the cockroach of rock and roll I'm just <laughs> not gonna fucking die the, yeah the latest version of, of the fifth is 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 really good I mean you did this um it's the last album was it 2020 was that uh -huh, 2021 yeah, yeah and I'm really I'm really excited working with RFK and working with Ron uh, to stray off uh, from cold sweat briefly 
uh, the the fifth record. We're about to go in the studio in July and uh, and finish recording the last batch of songs. And we're working with Chris McLernan, uh, who's the bass player, Cold Sweat, mm-hmm. of course, and also Saigon Kick. He's producing the record. Uh, and as you heard from the the single and video that we did, Starlight, he is a just a, a great great production guy. Yeah. And uh, we're recording the second batch of the uh, stuff uh, down in. Um, uh, South Carolina at Eric Bass of Shine Downs uh, Studio, so that's where uh, Chris uh, works out of, and uh, we're going to go down there and finish up the second half, and uh, hopefully get to work with Mr. Bass a little bit. <laughs> so that'll be does, cool. Does Chris talk anything about the the stuff going on with Saigon Kick again? All the back and forth. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I mean, uh, once we get this Unburied Alive and M Three behind us. Uh, I think Chris is going to go out and do a couple of Saigon kick uh, dates. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, Chris is, is uh, I, I guess we're all kind of coming out of mothball. Well, not me, damn it. I've been fucking grinding the whole time. The rest <laughs> of the guys are coming out of the mothballs. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, the, you know, it, it's, you know, everybody's trying to, to throw, throw the stuff out there. And uh, Chris is getting back out there with Saigon Kick to do some shows because they've got the anniversary of, I believe, Water is the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, ha- yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of music going on for everybody coming up in 24. Very cool, very cool. You mentioned, you mentioned M3, so that's coming up in a few weeks. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that'll be my first time seeing Cold Sweat because I never saw you guys in the clubs when you played back in the day. or in, You know, I just missed out on it. Um, uh, Chris, I know Ralph saw you guys. How many times you saw? I've seen, I seen Cold Sweat twice. Uh, the first time was in Lakeland, Florida, open for Dio. Great show. Amazing <laughs> show. That was an awesome show. And then the second time was the pre-crew show at the Miami Casino. Another uh, great show. Which the reaction Cold Sweat got that night was phenomenal. I mean, there were um, cool bands on that bill, but you guys stole the show. Uh, man, <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. Um, there's not a lot of times that, that things happen in your life that you just get that warm, fuzzy fucking feeling where you're like, God damn, this is so fucking cool. And, and man, there, there was some heartburn after cold sweat broke up. It took years for everybody to grow up and mature, mend the fences, everybody, you know, there were, we went decades without talking to, to each other. You know, some of us, you know, some of us all kept in touch and stuff. But for us to get together in a room and have literally not seen each other in over, you know, 30, coming up on 30 years and to hit the first note and have it be just like, like chef's kiss, like we just picked right up where we, where we left off 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and it was so fucking awesome because we rehearsed for like four and a half fucking hours, five hours that day. Not because we needed to, because we were just having so much goddamn fun, you know? <laughs> and then to go out that next night and look, none of us have any kind of delusions of grandeur that cold sweat was like this, this big entity on the rock scene. We know that we have our, our cult following of people and we know that we fall into that category of woulda, coulda, shoulda, came out a little bit too late, a couple of years sooner. And, of course, we got Mark Ferrari in the band, the guy that was in Wayne's World. So that, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, our, that's our, our thing. So when, you, when, when we got on the cruise, that was great. But when they asked us to do the pre-cruise party, you don't know what kind of response you're going to get. You don't know, you know, are people going to come? Is anybody going to be there? Even as long as you've been in the music business, you're like, fuck, man, is anybody going to even fucking care about this? And uh, to go out there and to see how everybody reacted uh, was really. So you saw, Dr. Fuck, you saw, <laughs> you saw two of probably the best shows I've ever, I've ever done in my career. Wow. Well, I, I would figure that when you played the cruise, you must have got the same reaction because the people that were at the casino were all the cruisers, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the crew, you know, the cruise uh, show was was great. 
Uh, but you know, I mean, uh, I think we were like the, the first show of the last day and we were up against hardcore superstars, uh, pool show, you know what I mean? And we were in the theater. So you know how those, those things are there. It's like, sometimes it's like a mishmash and you know, you're not going to get everybody cause somebody else is playing, you know, right, right. but still the overall response and the fans and everything has, has made us bring this beast back to life. And it's given me the chance to go, see motherfuckers. I told you so. I wish you motherfuckers would have listened to me. Because Dio knows I've been fucking holding that flag the whole time, you know, at, at, at well, fit shows yeah, I've been was, playing. Yeah. You know, I was telling him, you know, I was telling you over the last 10, 15 years, I was like, hey, man, you know, all these bands are getting back together, man. You guys need to get back together and do something. I said, you know, if you can get on something like M3, you know, there's a whole audience that just, you know, that's what they want to see. They want to see the the classic bands and stuff. Yeah. And hey, you know, at least you you guys are playing M3, you know, you got the original lineup. I mean, a lot of a lot of bands can't say that. I mean, they, they, most bands are remnants of what yeah, they're and, 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 and here's oh. another thing that's pretty cool about our upcoming M3 show. I'm I'm pretty sure, but we're the only only all original band on the bill. And we're also the only band that's actually out there promoting a new release oh. of new music. So yeah. that, you know, <clears throat> that's kind of that's kind of cool. So uh, one of our one of one in the comments, Mike Green says, Out on My Own is one of the catchiest Cold Sweat songs ever recorded. Unburied Alive is fantastic. I agree. That's that's Out on My Own is just great. It's just a very, very catchy song. And uh someone on here called Death to Demand said, I grew up in Fayetteville. I used to see you guys as Gibraltar, of course. So that was that was Roy's first band. That's where I saw Roy the first time in Gibraltar. I've got the album here. Yes. You know? yes. So he also used to print your merch too with the fifth. Who's that? That guy, Def to, Def oh, to okay. Demands. Yeah. He, oh, so he used to print your merch. Okay. No. Oh, okay. All right. Right on. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's really kind of cool because, you know, you know, uh, Dio is like literally the the guru of North Carolina. You know, hard rock and and metal and and if anybody's been around here, you know he's he's heard about it. And uh, mm. there's been times I've actually called Dio and asked him advice on on future band members for the fifth and stuff like that. So <laughs> I think I and walked people in. and didn't Jake call you and ask you about joining the fifth before he got in us with us? So. Who was that? Jake pretty much at, yeah, was trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he, yeah, he was like, "Hey, do you think I should? Do you think I should yeah. join this?" You know. Yeah, I think I walked in uh, the attic in Greenville one night. I think we went to see someone else, and and they had canceled, and Gibraltar was playing, and we oh, went wow. in, and we were like, "Wow, these guys are kicking ass!" You know. Dude, I was a baby. I was a kid. Yeah, that was when Roy was Roy was like eight years old back then, yeah. <laughs> and still had a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still had a mustache. Yeah. yeah the uh, the Gibraltar album got reissued a few years ago in Heaven and Hell Records on CD, and someone's put it out on vinyl now. I saw it somewhere. On, some labels put it out on vinyl, like we've done a reissue. Yeah, another label. Uh, they did a, actually a black and white, a black and yellow uh, vinyl pressing of it that was pretty dope. Is that the one that you've got? The one I've got is an original, but I. I have I saw an a, somewhere I think it was Gary from Heaven to Hell had a some stuff for sale and I think he had a, a new vinyl of it I just didn't see who did it and um, for people out there that wondering if you can still get the Cold Sweat album Breakout from 1990 that was reissued a couple years ago on 20th Century Music yes with um yeah so it did a nice nice reissue of that uh, is this on streaming platforms is this on um i, I believe so um uh, uh, you know we're just now since we're now becoming reactive we're trying to get everything sorted out with with the streaming services and um i know it's on youtube of course yeah and boy it can that be a a, a job in itself and a complete hassle so you know, one more thing. Getting... One more thing I want to ask you too is, uh, what's up with the? You did a project with Steel City a couple of years ago. This is a great record. Are you guys doing anything else, or is that, uh, is that a, just, just a one? -off? Actually, Steel City was uh, uh, pay, uh, signed by Frontiers uh, for the next record. So we just got finished. Uh, I just got finished tracking 
uh, my stuff a couple of months ago. It's been mixed and mastered, and it's out in Italy somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, expecting it to, to, to be released sometime this year. Uh, uh, you know, we're just waiting to get the release date. So, uh, yeah, Frontiers yes. doesn't play around. They they put so much stuff out. They're they're all mm -hmm. they're on it. So yeah, yeah. So we're uh, I've I've got another record for Steel City coming out, and uh, that's uh, like I said, that's going to be coming up later this year. Got a got another record from the fifth coming up for R on RFK Media. That'll be coming up later this year, and uh, you, know. you got. And so cold sweat was added. You guys, you doing? Are you doing? You're doing monsters on a mountain too, correct? Or are you? Are you doing? Are you doing the cruise? That's what you. We're doing. Right? We're doing the crew, cruise in twenty five. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're excited. We're excited about that. So what we'll probably do after M three, we'll uh, kind of test the waters and see how things go. But we would, you know, uh, probably end up doing a couple of uh, casino dates and stuff like that. Try and get on that casino circuit and maybe build up with like a Vixen Slaughter, you know, LA Guns. You know what I mean? One of those packages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, it, it, it's, you know, things are different now. It's it's not like the old days. It's not like a bunch of old men are going to jump on a tour bus and, and go play all over. It's just not that way. So, yeah, you know, we, we want to become um, active again, uh, semi-active, and, uh, and that does include putting out more new music. So, you know, we're going to kind of um, survey the musical landscape. We've got a great label behind us with RFK Media. Uh, and, and we're going to we're going to kind of going to pick our shots and uh, and and just kind of ride the wave. But so far, so good. The response from the fans have been fantastic. And, uh, you know, we got some cool stuff coming up. And I do personally. So uh, uh, can't complain. You know, how, how, how did you get on Ron Keel's radar? Was it the Mark Ferrari connection? Well, basically, when when Cold Sweat did the uh, 2020 Monsters of Rock cruise, um, I kind of reconnected with Ron on the cruise. You know, I knew him from the L.A. days. So I, I reconnected with Ron on, on the cruise, and I got up and uh, sang on uh, the Right to Rock with him on the stage. It was a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, Ron's right hand man, Aaron Fisher, who's his partner in, in, uh, in RFK media, um, <clears throat> when the crews wrapped up and they, and they started to put RFK media together and started looking at, at potential artists, um, it was Aaron that was like, well, you know, what about Roy Cathy's band, the fifth? And Ron was like, you know, well, Fuck, I'm I'm sold on Roy. He's like, sell me on the fifth. So uh, Aaron gathered the material and and kind of gathered you know a bit of a press kit of our history and 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 what we've done and and uh, Ron was like, okay, let's let's go for it. So uh, we were really fortunate to be the first band signed to the label, and um, it's very much a family type thing, you know, you're, and, and for the first time ever, I feel like I'm putting my, my music, my art in hands of people that actually genuinely care about it, you know, and, uh, we're, uh, we, we've got a, a great team there. You know, you, you've got, uh, you know, Renee Keel, Ron's wife, you've got Ron, you've got Aaron, uh, we're with Amplified Distribution. We've got Jody Best, a uh, publicist for the, uh, for the label. She's amazing works with artists like Def Leppard and Queen. So, I mean, they've got a great team put together and that makes me feel really good about, you know, what's going on uh, for the, for the band, you know? Yeah. Right, cool. You mentioned uh, Mark, you mentioned uh, Mark Ferrari. I would think if, if you guys wanted to write some new cold sweat music, I would think that he would have like a, library of riffs he could say here's one i didn't use because you know mark worked, <laughs> wrote for film and tv yes it still and still does and here's and so does yeah i was gonna say here's a riff i didn't use on uh, a macgyver episode yeah, <laughs> right Here, <laughs> here's, a, here's a here's a chase scene from from uh you know the new hawaii 50 um <laughs> you know uh mark's incredibly talented as a songwriter and and, and, and as a musician and as a businessman uh 
you know, Eric Gammons also has a, a music publishing, uh, you know, licensing company that he does called Sonic Librarian. And uh, Chris does it as well. So all of the guys are kind of have dabbled in that, but Mark's really the, the, the big wig in it. But, uh, you know, uh, Eric and Chris have, have already exchanged some riffs and Mark's, you know, you got to give it to Mark because Mark gives it that puts that Mark Ferrari polish on it, you know, and, and I'm, I'm excited, man, you know, but, 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 you know, we're realistic. We're taking it one step at a time and, uh, you know, uh, we're just going to, we're going to see how everything flows. But right now with the initial response of, you know, the fans and, and the, the units that we've moved, I feel really strong. I think we're actually going to go 10. Uh, we might actually go aluminum. So, you know, those are really big numbers for me. So That's right. Yeah. I, I, I have to say, if, uh, this, this happened like four or five years ago. Uh, Roy Roy uh, brought to my attention that Tom Schultz from Boston has bad hearing. <laughs> <laughs> His hearing is horrible because Roy uh, recorded more than a feeling. And my God, dude, that was for an audition, wasn't it? Yes, it was for a Boston tribute band that I that I uh, did a couple of shows for out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It was like so spot on. It's like why did? But you put the, you you made that mm -hmm. for Tom Schultz, right? To, for an you know, I, I don't know if I no. You know, I mean, I got I initially recorded it whenever I got the chance to audition for that that Boston tribute thing, oh. and they were and they were. Uh, officially sanctioned by Tom Schultz because he holds on to that trademark and that whole thing like super tight. He's got like an army of lawyers that, you know, if you cross that Boston line, he's, he's ready to sue you. So he, he you know, he might've heard it. I don't know, but I, I appreciate it. I, I really, uh, I really, when I, when I got the chance to do that, <clears throat> It, it made me a better singer because I kind of had to learn a different style of, of uh, singing. You know, uh, I, I, I heard a lot of Boston growing up, but I didn't listen to a lot of Boston growing up. And then when I had to listen to it and learn it, I tried to Rob Halford and Judas Priest those notes out. And <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that, you know? So uh, I kind of had to learn what I call, uh, Broadway rock singing and uh, it's a lot of falsetto and, and head voice and stuff like that, but uh, made me a better singer in, in the long run. It, it really did. So uh, yeah, that's, I hate that's I didn't cool. get to do more shows with them. I, I think I did about five or six shows and uh, they had been doing that, that thing for about eight, nine years out there on the West coast. Dude, they did like, High end casino resort places and you know big events you know those live after five events where they you know you walk out there they're like the second show I did with them I walk out there's like six thousand people oh, <laughs> what wow the fuck, man? <laughs> I, you know, I know you you talking about recording some some cover songs I don't know if is the is the Bevan Davies album out on streaming. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know I've seen it on YouTube uh, music. Uh, so Be Bevan Davies is a, is a drummer. Uh, he played with Static X, Danzig, uh, several other bands, Jerry Cantrell's. Jerry uh, Cantrell. band, uh, but he goes back to like me and Roy's like past back in North Carolina days. He played in a band called Still Rain. And you said, you said he was in Gibraltar at one he point. Was, he was in killer Gibraltar drummer. Before, before Still Rain. Yeah, yeah killer, so killer drummer. He, killer drummer and uh still rain was like this band from north carolina that like everybody in the band went on to be in bigger bands later mm. on like a couple of guys are in seven dust ones in like evanescence uh yeah, yeah you know different uh different ones and um so yeah um but bevin's is killer drummer and he did this record that was just songs that he grew up on that inspired him to be a drummer and a couple of the things he did everything from like the, it's the time of the season to you know some uh some zeppelin and some sabbath but he does badlands he does high wire and roy sings it and sings the fuck out of it and roy also does kill the king which 
Kill the King is my favorite Cozy Powell drumming song. I mean, just what he plays on the studio version. And Bevan, like, mimics it just, like, spot on. And Roy man. singing Dio, man. Roy is killing it on, on the I, Kill the King. I really so think. them out there on YouTube. Check them out. Not a lot of people have heard that version, but I, I honestly think that that version of me doing Kill the King is, is one of my one of my better studio performances uh, because I really wanted to nail that because it was Ronnie, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, importance, you know, to get it right. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was a great session. And, and uh, uh, also Nathan Utz is on that, on that session as well, doing, uh, doing a Van Halen song. And I got to sing background vocals on light up the sky. Yeah. And, uh, Another great one. Yeah. A little, a little trivia, a little trivia stuff, a little cold sweat trivia. Um, Nathan was one of the guys in the final running to get the cold sweat gig. I guess like Mark had either flown out to Atlanta or flew him out to LA or something, but there was correspondence with, with Nathan and he was in that band called the blondes at the time. So, uh, Never met the cat before, right? And we end up doing a session like years and years later. And we're like standing out front of the recording studio. And he's known Bevan for years. And I've known Bevan for years. And and he's like, well, what's well, name, man? You know, he goes, uh, so, so how do you know Bevan? And I'm like, well, you know, I was in a band back in North Carolina called Gibraltar. And, you know, Bevan was my drummer, you know, and. And I got this chance to, you know, go out to L.A. and do a record for Mark Ferrari, a band called Cold Sweat. He goes, wait a minute. Is that what? I was like, yeah, I got to go out to L.A. and, and do a record for, for MCA, Cold Sweat, Mark Ferrari. He goes, you're the motherfucker that got that gig? Goddamn, son of a bitch, <laughs> after all these years. I can't believe it. Goddamn. And me and him are friends to this day. I mean, and it was just, it was so fucking funny because. <laughs> And who would think, you know, after all these years, you know, we meet up at a, at a studio doing a session. It was hilarious. Yeah. So, um, so you went to L.A. to audition. Where, where were you? You were in North Carolina at the time? Yes. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How, how did you hear about the audition for Cold Sweat? Uh, Gibraltar, you know, we played from like Pennsylvania down to Florida. And we had a week. Uh, stand at the uh, Button South in Hallandale, Florida. Yeah, I'm one of my favorite clubs. <laughs> uh, the Button South, baby. Yeah, yeah, you know, fucking so much cocaine. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I met eBay that week. Yeah, he the club, fucking snooted out of his fucking gourd. Anyway, uh -huh. that's that's a whole other story. But um, we were playing down in in Florida. And one night, and you know how the clubs are, they're open till fucking four or five o'clock in the yeah. fucking morning, you know, we're playing four sets, you know, this fucking guy comes up to me fucking hammered, man, and he's like, hey, man, hey, man, my best friend, man, he's out in L.A., and, and he was in this band. They're already signed to MCA, but man, he like quit, man. He like quit. And like this band's managed by Wendy Dio, man. And you're perfect, man. You're like fucking perfect. You're just you're perfect. He goes here, man. Here, here's my here's this, here's the guitar player's fucking phone number, man. You need to fucking call. It's Mark Ferrari, man. Remember Keel? Remember Keel? And by that time, I had been playing the clubs for about seven years. So even though I was only like 22, I started when I was like 15. I was a salty dog. I'm like, yeah, okay, man, whatever. Okay, I'm all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's coked up, drunk, booze. He's spitting in my face. I mean, I'm like, yeah, okay. fuck yeah, dude. Wendy Dio, right, right. Thanks, man, thanks. Take the take the phone number on the piece of paper, right? Put it in my, my stage pants. Next day you go, you know, you're on the road, you start putting your laundry together to fucking, you know, do your laundry. And I'm going through my pockets and there's the phone number. And we were in the hotel room in, Hall in Hallandale still. And I'm like, dad, I'm like, you know, I tell my dad the story, right? My dad managed the band. And I'm like, hey, can I charge a phone call to the room and call this number? And he goes, yeah, sure, you know. 
So I call it and I hello, you know, and it's like, is is this Mark? And he goes, Yeah. And I'm like, Mark Mark Ferrari? He goes, Yeah, yeah, who's this? You know, and anyway, I sent him a demo and, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know how to put together a promo pack and I sent it to him. He didn't like it. Uh, I called him back, begged him for a live audition, and he said, Look, he goes, uh, he goes, the label's already flown everybody out. I've flown everybody out that we can afford. He goes, if you pay for your flight out here, I'll give you an audition, and I'll let you sleep on my floor in my apartment. That's the best I could do. And I'm like, so. So I got on a plane for the first time. I, I flew I flew out on Monday, auditioned on Wednesday, and I signed a fucking record deal on Friday. It was like, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> I didn't even go home. My mom and dad had to mail me my clothes because we went right into pre-production because they'd been on hold for six months. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we got to go do this record, you know? So once they got me, I it was that fast. So that whole time you were recording the album, you were sleeping on Mark's floor? Uh, well, what happened from there, I, first I was on Mark's floor. Then for about a month, I stayed at Wendy Dio's house. Oh, wow. Which was which you could imagine what a mind fuck that was for me, let alone all my friends back home. I would call and be like, hey, I'm fucking by Wendy Diaz, fucking pool. Oh my God. Because <laughs> seriously, I had nowhere to go. And Wendy was like, well, look, I've got to go to Europe to do some negotiating for Ronnie about something. So he could just stay at my place and then we'll get him a, a place sorted out. And, they were in the. Uh, they, they were trying to get a house for Eric and Rowan. You know, Rowan, the guitar player for Dio, the, the teenage kid. So they basically ended up. Uh, uh, I ended up sleeping on the floor at Eric and Rowan's house after I moved out of Wendy's house. <laughs> it was hilarious because <laughs> I signed this record deal. I'm, I'm, you know, in this famous. I'm on. And then all these magazines and shit like that. Everybody at home thinks I'm fucking loaded. And I'm sleeping on the floor of a mattress, <laughs> fucking eating baked potatoes and pot pies. And happy as a fucking pig and shit, though. You know, because you're living your dream and everything. But it's just so funny how people are like, you know, oh, fuck, man. You know, it's immediately fucking Corvettes and, you know. <laughs> Ferraris. Ferraris and, <laughs> Ferraris and condos. And Mark finally got his Ferrari, but it wasn't through music. It was through the company that he started that, you know. Wayne's World. Yeah. <laughs> no, really cool. I was stalking you on uh, Facebook and I came across some pictures and stuff. Uh, you're a big wrestling fan, apparently. Yes. Uh, lifelong wrestling fan. Uh, you know, when you're from the South, you know, it's kind of to, embedded yeah. in the culture a lot. Yeah, uh, I've I've got the chance to do a couple of things for AEW recently. I yeah, got so you're involved with some Sting tribute thing, right? Did a Sting tribute song for for an EP that they uh, uh, released for him um, uh, for his uh, retirement called mm. Decades. So I got to do the first era when he was Surfer Sting, and I got to do an intro for uh, Kip Sabian uh, last oh, okay. year. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's 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 cool, you know, because to be able to combine something that you love with something that you love is, you know, oh, and, yeah, get paid, and get paid for it is, is kind, of, kind of fucking cool. You know, so yeah. what do you think of EC, uh, AEW? Uh, I think AEW made the WWE have to compete. Yeah. And and I, I think that until AEW came along. There was a good decade plus that they were just putting out the same shit and the fans were just eating it and they didn't right. care because that's the only flavor ice cream that there fucking was. And you're going to eat it and just yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah. And I think AEW made the WWE have to compete. But, you know, now with the implosion of Vince McMahon, poopy dude, oh, yeah. <laughs> cray cray, will fucking nut that is nuts. Yeah. Uh, with that, that, and now with Triple H being able to be given more creative control, I, I think that you know it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. So that's Definitely. all I got to say. It's 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 a super super cool time. So there's some great stuff out there. So yeah, definitely. Hey, TNA is on right now, and I'll be watching New Japan later. So I'm a thank God my girlfriend lets me watch it. Love you, honey. <laughs> I can't get my wife or my son to get into it at all. 
It's let me let me ask you guys, since you're wrestling fan, so I didn't know about this until the other day. Uh, a guy was telling me, I guess he went, I guess it was some events going on during WrestleMania. Have you heard of this band, Eat the Turnbuckle? So no, there's this no. band, it's like wrestling. They, they, like they, they perform and they have a wrestling match going on while they're performing, but they had like Necro Butcher and oh people just God. doing hardcore wrestling while the band, and they played their last show this past weekend. That's it. They're not doing it anymore. It's just, that was their farewell show. But it, there's video of them playing and it's just hardcore wrestling going on the whole time. It's just, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to do a little deep dive on YouTube. Eat that. the turnbuckle. Eat the turnbuckle. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah, Never heard of it. <laughs> mixing metal and wrestling, <laughs> metal and hardcore. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, well, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, this was fun, Roy. I hope you had a lot of fun with us. Today. Oh man, you guys, yeah, you guys are great. On. All all it was is like hanging out with a couple of bros. If we had beers, we'd be sitting hey. in a bar all fucking night talking. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to mention one thing too before we let you we get ready to go here, but uh. Uh, you know, we, I, we we lost CJ the other day. We lost CJ Snare. And I know you go back with him because mm. CJ and Perry from Firehouse were in a band called Max Warrior from mm -hmm. North Carolina that was a, like a Judas Priest-style band. And I know Gibraltar probably played with them back in the day. I'm sure yes. you crossed paths. I'm sure you crossed paths during the Firehouse days as well. Yes. Can you say anything about that? Well, you know um – Got to play with CJ and Firehouse on the 2020 cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth also got to open for them before that at a Dorton Arena at the State Fair one time. Um, and I, you know, we always a nice guy, always very professional, always still on point vocally. He he's yeah, one of the singer. one of the a few guys from the era, you know, you know, myself included, maybe. Uh, that still are, is holding up as far as vocally goes, you know. Uh, CJ just hadn't missed a note. And, um, dude, I was really shocked. Um, uh, it, it really shocked the hell out of me. I knew that he had been out of commission for a while. Uh, but, you know, you're just always kind of hoping it, for the best, you know, that it wasn't anything that serious. But for him to pass away like that, man, it, it, it uh, it's it's terrible, and it's it's a huge loss. And uh, you know, um, it just goes to show you, man. You just you never know, you, you know, yeah. you, you never know. So everybody, all of us, you know, take care of yourselves. Go see your doctors. You know, make sure you you get your checkups and all that stuff. And uh, you know, because uh, you never know what's lurking in there. And we the sooner you can jump on it, the better. So hey, it's terrible. Yeah. You know, Dio, man, would have still been with us if, he yeah. for, or if he, they would have caught that early. He yeah. Be with us today. And you know, the I, same, same I with told, my father. I told my, you the story, Ralph, you know, about the last time I saw Ronnie was in 2009, August 2009, and he gave us some beer that night, and he said, yeah, I'd been drinking a lot. My stomach's been kind of screwed up, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah. See, see, and see, my father passed away from cancer and it was, you know, if he would have gone to the doctor, you know, he was an old stubborn old Southern mountain man. So they don't go to the doctor. So, you know, if he would have gone to the doctor, you know, sooner, he would have probably still been around, but everybody, everybody is deeply, uh, you know, devastated by CJ's sudden passing, man, and, and it and it hurts, man. It does, especially he's such a nice guy and just somebody I got nice to know guy. over the years, you know. He's yep. just cool, you know. I mean, the last time I saw CJ was at Marty's funeral, and that was in 2019. That was a mutual friend of ours that, that passed away. So, We've had some losses in our community, haven't we? Yeah, we really have, yeah. I mean, it was just like, bam, bam, bam. They just, they just kept coming for a while. Yep. You know. And then all the people that we lost doing COVID and stuff too, you know, I yeah. lost some really close friends during that period. Yeah, yeah I, did, been crazy. I did as well. Been crazy. I, I did as well. It has been crazy. So, yeah. uh, you, know. you know, what's funny is uh, during COVID when it was new, um, when they first had the vaccine, but when they first had the vaccine, you had to sign up for it. You couldn't go right away, mm -hmm. you know. So we, me, me, my cousin, we all signed up for it. Well, my cousin and his father, which is my uncle, both got the COVID, right? Mm -hmm. so, 
and my cousin was pretty overweight. So, um, you know, and what happened was my cousin was in such bad shape. They had to put him in, I don't know what it's called. It's kind of like they have to put him in a coma, you yeah. know, they had to put him in a coma. And while he's in the coma, his father dies. Ah. And I'm like, oh, God, you know, this poor guy is going to come out of his coma and find out his mm. father died. He never came out of the coma, man. Oh, so, my uncle and cousin died from COVID pretty early on. You know? Wow. Yeah, which is. Yeah, yeah, you know. it's it, it was a. It's really kind of crazy because, you know, I mean, here we are straying off, but it's OK. That's what these shows are all about. You know, it's it's crazy to think about what we all lived through. Yeah. how crazy it was because at the beginning man it was nuts nobody knew what the fuck was going on really yeah. you know and it's, and it's so great to look back on it now because we took for granted so many little things like remember movie trailers that you used to see and you used to get excited about the movie and oh man it's coming out to the theaters and everything remember how that, that shit just fucking disappeared yeah just disappeared you know yeah. it's good to get little things you start seeing movie trailers you start you know people going to sporting events and concerts and stuff and man just not too long ago people forget man we were fucking locked down and fucking scared as scalded dogs man it's a crazy yeah. time we made it through yeah I, we you know I, I for one you know I, I definitely missed going out to live music you know and it was it's good good to have it back you know absolutely that was hey, go see a show. Go Support see a people. show. Please go see a show. Come see, come see me at M3. Damn it. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that, man. It's coming up in a couple weeks, man. It's, it's a great lineup that day too. So yeah, yeah. What is the Brett Michaels and D Snyder? What the, what the, what is that? I don't know, but you know, D Snyder is now a North Carolina resident. Really? I heard some word he that bought, he was up he somewhere. Bought a, he bought a home in Greensboro. I saw a photo of it. It's like outside of Greensboro, 12 car garage. That's what we're not going to take it. We'll buy you. I heard, I heard <laughs> he had an island. Didn't you hear something about that? Or he lived no. on an island? Twisted, the island of Twisted Toys. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, I mean, if you think about it, you know, he's always lived way up north. The, the price of houses up there and like the prices out of houses out west, you know, you, you come somewhere in North Carolina, you, you spend, you know, a million dollars, you get a million dollars, you know For what sure. I mean? sure, yeah. You know? But it's like so, a lot of, I, I, maybe, I think I heard he was living in Nashville, Tennessee, but like they talk like the, the cost of living in Nashville is just outrageous now. It is. It's outrageous. Yeah. In Nashville, it's still outrageous in Los Angeles, you know, up in New York and, you know, Florida. That's pretty crazy now, you know. My man yeah. Ralph down there in Florida just dealing with all that crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a little cheaper up north Florida. I mean, people don't really? realize, people don't realize how huge Florida is. Florida it takes so. me from where I live. It takes me nine hours to get out of Florida. That's <laughs> a, so so up north Florida seems to be better, like in the central Florida. But yeah, down here where I live, it's ridiculous the prices, you know. Yeah, my sister's in Sarasota, so she's, yeah, you know. She's up north. She, well, it should be cheaper there, no? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. She's a, she's at some, is it Sarasota? She's in some hoity-toity area, man. I don't know, man. Her, her like, rent for her condo is, like, stupid, you know, $2,700 or something. I don't know. Yeah. Too, too rich for my blood. <laughs> Roy's still in the hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where Same here. Where are you from again, Wayne? New York, Long Island. Twenty wow. minutes from D. Snyder's old house, apparently. Yeah, he moved. But you live where now? I'm in Long Island. I, I never. You're moved. still in Long Island. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said you'd moved. Okay. No, 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 no. No, nope, I'll die here. <laughs> He'll die you can, with all you can enjoy the, in, in, enjoy the snow. You yeah. probably still got snow. No, yeah, it snowed once this year. That was it. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're getting snow anymore. I think that's done. How, how, how has your winter been? I mean, I didn't have one cold day at all down here. It's been cold, but it's not like usual. Like last year, last year we maybe had two snowstorms. This year we only had one. So it's been kind of like mild. I really didn't wear a winter jacket that much this year. So it's it's weird. It, it, things we, are changing. We had a very mild winter around yeah. here in the south. Yeah, no snow. No we snow. Had no snow. 
Mm-mm. We didn't even really have any days that went into the teens. If my memory serves me correct, I'm an HVAC, so it's like, you know, uh, the seasons are important to us. Uh, but, yeah, man, it was it was a, a very mild, short winter. Um, so right now I'm ready for it to get hot as balls so I could start selling some units and making some money. <laughs> and it's coming. I bet it's going to be a, a strong one this yeah, summer. I, yeah. I, hope it's, I hope it's just global warming hot. Oh, please. Oh, <laughs> I don't want it that hot. You have to get into swimming pool business then. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. It's going to be great, man. Absolutely, gentlemen. I appreciate this evening. It was a, it was a blast. Anytime, a anytime. Fun. Thank you so much, Roy. And that cruise you're leaving next year, is that leaving from Miami? Yes, sir, it is. Hopefully you'll play another pre-cruise show in Miami. Because uh, those pre-cruise shows that, that you played, it's uh, not really for the general public like us. It's only for the cruisers. But if you get there early enough, right, you can get in. So yeah, everybody. yeah. All right, uh, I'll be right back. All right. Uh, you want to <laughs> He's got oh. stuff going on over there. Yeah. A couple, a couple of questions. Somebody wants to know what was the first album you listened to, or do you remember the first the album? First album that I listened to. Yeah. <laughs> wow, uh, great question. <laughs> uh, I was really obsessed with sounds as a child growing up, so. Um, I was really blown away with the Star Wars album. Oh, I thought really? that was just fat, the sounds and just the grandness of it was was amazing. And then uh, I started listening to my sister's albums. I got into, you know, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, uh, you know, stuff like that. Of course, all the, the AM radio hits that were, were swirling around at the time, you know, so that made me really deep into melody. And then uh, some of her boyfriends brought over some old albums, and I I heard Judas Priest Stained Class for the first time, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" You know. Mm. Yeah. So that sent me down the 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 road of heavy music, uh, and um, but I've always just been uh, obsessed with sounds. So mm-hmm. actually, the first one one would uh would be a uh, Star Wars soundtrack. Interesting. Very cool. Never, nobody's ever mentioned that one. That's cool. I had that on yeah. H-Pack, the Star Wars soundtrack. <laughs> it very nice. Very nice. I know how old he is now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing 60, man. Next year. Yeah, I know. You're getting up there. Me, me too, brother. What are you talking about? Right, right here. And, and it I, don't, you don't feel it, right? I mean, I don't feel it. I can't I, believe it, you know? Dude, I look, I ain't gonna lie, I feel it because I have to crawl up underneath houses and shit. Okay. So, yeah, I, I feel it. And yeah, no, I mean, actually, you know, I in comparison to a lot of people that I went to high school with and people that I see from my past, I'm 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 doing doing okay. You know. Yeah. It's rock and roll, man. I'm telling you, rock and roll gives you that suspended state of adolescence. It keeps you young, you're you know, you 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 have a passion and a love. It, it keeps it keeps you going. No, I know, I know exactly what you mean because all my friends from my youth, they look thirty years older than me. <laughs> so, you know, I'm but, only forty five and I look thirty years older. But they me. don't rock like us, man. Yeah. Right. Rock and roll. That's right. It's rock, rock and roll, roll, boys. Rock and roll. Yeah. Right on, Roy. Thank you again for joining us. And oh, before you leave, mm-hmm. some plugs where they can get your stuff. Uh, you can, you know, always go to rfkmedia.com. There's all the cold sweat. Uh, there's the fifth material that's on there as well. Uh, you know, like I said, the Frontiers record for Steel City is going to be dropping later this year. So uh, you can find most of the stuff. Uh, out there online. I also have my own personal website, which is uh, RoyCathy.com. So, uh, yeah, just type me into the interwebs and you'll find me. No no OnlyFans pages. No, no. <laughs> All right. Not yet, I'm, not anyway. that, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure, my friend. I hope uh, you will come join us again when you got something. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. You guys have a great night. I appreciate you. All right, man. Right on. Appreciate appreciate you, man. Out, fellas. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. And all right, Wayne and Tony. 
this was a good show, man. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. had a lot of fun. Very cool guy. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, he's a good dude. And uh, yeah, I, I, and you know, it's funny while we were doing the interview, I remember during the interview about that more than a feeling. He sent me that years ago, but I could have sworn he told me he sent it to John, Tom Schultz or he was trying to audition. But man, I don't know if I still have it, but it's unbelievable how he sings that Brad Delp stuff. You know, the guy that ended up getting the gig in Boston was from North Carolina. He was from like, uh, I think he was from like Burlington, North Carolina or something. And he, and he was, yeah, he worked at a Home Depot and he just sang karaoke for a hobby. The guy had never been in a band in his life. He'd never fronted a band. And I Uh, I never, I, I was stupid. I hated third stage. So much I didn't. That was my only chance to see Brad Delp. Mm-hmm. I didn't go. So when I finally did see Boston, it was with that Home Depot dude. He was great. Yeah, I didn't. I, I had a chance to see him on Third Stage tour, and uh, I didn't go. But I did get to see them uh, in early two thousand before Brad uh, passed away. As a matter of fact, I was working. I was working a Boston show, and I was coming around a corner. Brad's coming around another corner and we almost ran into each other. Wow. And he's like, whoa. And I was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I was like, you know, he looks at me. He goes, you look like my old guitar player. Yeah. Like he said, I look like Barry Gordu. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And that was Which what he said way, to me. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which, by the way, Barry's got a great solo on which. Yes, that Brad sings on. Brad sings on. Yeah, Barry Gordu. Yeah. You know, I never knew anything about that back in the day. I remember, you know, being big into Boston and 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 uh waiting for third stage to come out. And we had Orion the Hunter, which was Barry's yeah, yeah. other band. Yeah. And we loved that, me and some friends, you know, but we did nobody we didn't know anything about Barry's solo record until like years later. A friend, when some label finally put a Ryan the Hunter out on CD and they put the Barry album out at the same time, and that's when I discovered it. But yeah, it's great, man. It sounds just like a Boston album. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. I talked about that a while ago on this yeah, show. Just, yeah, just a, a great one. But but I remember Third Stage coming out, and I remember a good friend of mine skipped school that day to go by Third Stage. And then I was like, that afternoon, I was like, well, how is it? He goes, oh, it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. And I listened to it, and I was like, wow, this is such a letdown. Now, mm-hmm. over the years, it's grown on me, and I, I like it now. But at the time, it was just too slow, you know? Yeah, it's starting to go down. Yeah, it's starting to go down. It's like, what? Huh. No, I'm sorry. To me, it's only about the first two. You know, I like the song Walk On. But I didn't like that album much. Yeah, and that was was that Brad on that one? I know Fran Cosmo sang on one album, the guy I from Orion to Hunter. Brad might have been on Walk On. Yeah. But I ended up working a show when that Home Depot guy was singing. And um I, I know his name. I just can't think of it what it is. But uh because he I saw he does solo shows around and stuff. Um <laughs> but um he was very green. You could tell he'd never fronted the band before. And this is when Michael Sweet and Striper was playing guitar with him. And they're rocking up there. And he's kind of just standing there, man. He didn't have much stage presence. Then fast forward a few years later, I see some video of him playing somewhere. And he's total rock star. I mean, he's out there throwing the Coverdale poses and everything, man. It, t- it took him a few years to come out of his shell, you know. But, uh. But yeah, he was doing a good job. But um, yeah, I think uh, sadly, I think that band might be done. I think Tom might be a little bit too old, and I think he didn't want to do it anymore. Well, at least I got to see it once. Before. But yeah, they they had some good music back in the day. But uh, yeah, I need to hear that uh, that oh, that Roy did. I need to hear that uh, song. Oh, he did. Was was that more than a feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I got to get going. I you know my, my problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good luck with that. I just want to let everybody know I've been uploading this show onto a podcast version. So if anybody doesn't want to look at our ugly faces, it'll be uh, available. It's right now. It's on Spotify and Amazon Music, but I'm trying. I'm going to get it on iTunes and all the other ones too. So if anybody wants to listen to it, I sound really southern and just audio. You do. do. (laughs) And Wayne, you know, you need to get me and Tony on a rap salad when you do like what you did with Kiss and stuff. Yeah. For what? 
for bands we like when you do something wacky about bands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I want to get you guys back on the show again. Yeah, so, have uh, me and Tony on, man. Yeah, we definitely will. I, this, Halloween. This years just started. You guys don't like Halloween enough. And, we already did it. Oh, I only like the first three I love Halloween. Are you crazy? Uh, I, I think the last album sucked, though. But uh, yeah, kind of on the fence about it. Walls of Jericho is godly. But uh, anyway, yeah. I want to thank again Tony and Wayne and everybody out there watching right now. We're going to be back next week with an almost human episode. We don't know what the goddamn thing we're going to do, but we'll think of something, goddammit. Till then, stay frosty, listen to Black Sabbath, and smack them a gob. Later. Bye.